A new study has revealed that the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is less effective against the Delta variant of COVID-19. This study suggests the need for a second dose for the millions of people who have already received the jab, and it's been done in the United States. Let's speak now to critical care professor at Vets University. That's Prof. Guy Riches. Prof, good afternoon. Thank you very much. We saw the story making the rounds on New York Times earlier today and via the Bloomberg News Agency saying that there is research suggesting now that you need more than one dose of J&J for it to be effective against the Delta variant. The Delta variant is beginning to dominate, uh, including in the U.S., I think up above 80% of, um, of, of prevalence there. And here it is also the dominant variant. Should we worry for those healthcare workers in the country who've already received the J&J? &J? Should they be going for the second jab now? So I think that there isn't enough evidence to actually say that at the moment. In fact, there has been another study already, which is actually published in the New England Journal of Medicine, showing that the immunity actually increases and is maintained over at least an eight-month period after you've received DJ and J. And that's specifically to the Delta, but to other variants as well. The, what we have to remember is that the Delta variant is resistant to, or not resistant, is more resistant to all of the uh, current vaccines. In other words, the immune response that we develop following the vaccine is less against the Delta variant. But remember, we are also not measuring all aspects of the immune response when you're looking at the antibodies alone, because there are other important factors involved, such as cellular immunity, which in fact appears to be adequate. If one looks then at that uh, NEJM study, which is published, and this current study is still a preprint, in other words, it hasn't been peer reviewed, and we also look at the emerging data from Sesonki, which has also not been published, it appears that the vaccine is holding up quite strongly against severe disease and against hospitalization and death. And that's what we're really aiming at. We know that people get breakthrough infections and a large number of healthcare workers actually have had breakthrough infections. But the numbers of those people getting severe infections appears to be extremely low, but we're awaiting that Sasanki data. So we should be worried around the severity of a breakthrough infection than just another infection at all. Because even last month here, I interviewed a South African doctor who and his wife had got the J&J in February, the jab, but they got uh, positive. They tested positive for the virus, but they were not severely ill. Is that the main worry? That's quite correct. And that's why the whole old idea that we had, we hoped to be able to get herd immunity, that you get enough people infected that they would have sufficient antibodies to prevent them getting any infection at all has fallen by the wayside. So now what we are uh, looking at is a reduction in severe infections, hospitalizations and death. And all the vaccines that we are looking at or using currently in South Africa appear to be effective with regard to that. We're going to have more information once the Sasanki data becomes available from Glenda Gray and company. When do we expect that? Because the study that has made me to want to talk to you this afternoon is the one that's been done in the United States. And you say, you use the words, and I'm quoting you, is preprint, which means it's still subject to peer review. But on the Sisonke side, we've got the evidence in our country. When can we realistically expect its outcomes? So I think that I can't speak to exactly when, but I would say within the next couple of weeks to a month. But what is important to note is that Sasanki will be giving you real-world data. Remember that this study that has just been published is one looking at immune responses in the lab rather than looking at whether, in fact, it prevents against severe disease or hospitalization. So Sasanki will give us that information as to what happens on the ground to people who actually have infections, as opposed to merely taking blood and saying, oh, yes, your immune response is not as great as we would expect. Yeah, but you would understand from, from me as a media person, when I read these and I see a headline that says one dose of J&J &J is less effective against Delta, I said, oops, what is going on? But what you are saying, that study that you are referring to now has been done in a laboratory. Our Sisonke trials are real world. They will give us the real picture close enough to the real truth. I think so, and I think that 
it is possible that some of the vaccines will do better with a booster. Uh, we've seen heterologous vaccine with the AstraZeneca followed by one Pfizer, which gives a very strong response. And maybe, maybe that might actually help. But at this point, looking at the emerging data, it doesn't seem necessary as yet, particularly in a country where, in fact, we've got a shortage of vaccine, vaccines anyway. And to now give some people two when the vast majority of the country doesn't have uh, a single one, it seems a little bit troublesome to me. Yeah, OK, we're going to have to wait. It's going to be interesting what Sisonka tells us when the, the trials come out. But thank you very much, uh, Prof. Richards, for your time. At this stage, we're going to have to wait and see that uh, study in the United States that's showing there that the Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine, a single dose, rather, of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine is less effective against the Delta variant. It was been done in the laboratory, not real-world data. Here in South Africa, we are awaiting to hear from the likes of Professor Glenda Gray soon about the Sisonke trial. What has it told us? Because the Sisonke trial used the Johnson & Johnson jab, and all or the majority of our healthcare workers, nurses, doctors, and people who work in hospitals got the Johnson & Johnson jab. The question is, do they need a second dose or not? We'll have to wait and find out later on when the Sisonke trial outcomes are published.